Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 14. Put it on screen for us. I want everybody to see it. I know somebody will be saying, I hope it's not a wrong scripture he wants to quote. He's talking about Christmas and he's going to Ecclesiastes. Jesus was not born in Ecclesiastes. Praise the Lord. But look at the message therein. Now we usually rise up to read the first Bible passage in our church. So let's be on our feet so that we can read Ecclesiastes 2 verse 14 together. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 14 together. All stand. Thank you for the honor of God's word. The Bible says, God said, I, I, I exalt above all things my word above my name. One, two, and let's read together. The wise man's eyes are in the, his head. Let's come again. Let's come again. One, two, and let's go. The wise man's eyes are in his head. But the fool walks in darkness. Yet I myself perceived that the same event happened to them all. I don't know whether this scripture makes sense. He says the wise man's eyes is not just where it is in the socket. It is inside his head. He said but the fool walks in darkness. It means that the fool has eyes but does not see what the wise man sees. Am I communicating? So it means that it is not your physical eyes that determines what you see. Did you hear me? I come again. It means that it is not your physical eyes that determines what you see. Haven't you seen people with two eyes eh? and they are walking into a trap? One look you made you, but one, one day in the one new day from that one. They have two eyes. I received a call just like that from a young lady from, I, I've, not, I've not met her before. She called and said, sir, and she told me certain things. She was dating a ritualist. He said, sir, every time this my boyfriend will be doing ritual and something is telling me that he will use me. I asked her, then why are you there? He said, I just don't know. I love him. You will see that she has eyes, but she's blind. Show us that scripture. You will soon sit down. We'll just hold on. But the difference between the wise man and the natural man is that the wise man's ability to reason. That's what we call the reasoning eyes. That is, you can think and discover the things that a, a, an ordinary person cannot see. Haven't you seen people who, who they are, they are, they are, they are addicted to alcohol? It is destroying their life, but they don't want to stop. They have eyes, but they are blind. Somebody introduced me to a, a nurse. He works in UCH. He lives in my area. I've tried to counsel this young man. He has drank to the point that if you see him, alcohol had, has deformed his face. He looks drunk even when he has not drunk anything. And what does he drink? It's Paragao. He's a senior nurse in usage. He will just take one shot, but it has deformed his appearance. Now be seated. So, God does not want his children to just have only this thing physical eyes. God wants us to begin to get to the point where we can reason and see with our head. Now, that's why we are looking at the lesson. So that Christmas will not just be, oh, I've seen December 25, praise God. Oh, we killed chicken in our house, praise God. We had rice. Christmas is beyond that. Would you bear law? I wrote in my notes here, beloved, what makes a wise man different is his ability to be able to learn from all things. That's what makes a wise man different. The natural man will look at things and just see things. But the wise man will look at things and learn from it. When we talk about Christmas last year, a wise man will tell you what he learned. A foolish man will tell you how much he spent. That last year's Christmas, I caught this particular revelation, this particular light, and this is the result today. Now, we are looking at the difference. Listen, I wrote here, he looks at all things, 
That's the wise man. And people, and he immediately gains instruction. That's one thing with the wise men. They look at events, they look at people, and they gain instructions from happenings. Wise people gain instructions from happenings. Foolish people only flow in the events. That's why I always ask people, what did you gain from anything you go through? Because life itself is a lesson. But it takes only the wise men to be able to get something from the events they went to. Let's go deeper. Praise the Lord. Are you sure you are here? I didn't hear you. The reason is this. His own eyes. Listen, the wise man. His own, his own eyes is beyond physical. He is able to reason deep. That's why I want us to learn from Christmas. The wise man is able to reason deep. And can I tell you this truth? If you don't wake up in your reasoning, your condition cannot change you. If you don't wake up, to ba soji ni bi pe a a a kini yo ban pe o pe ki yon lo ye ki ye yon shi. Just like we are complaining about our country, Nigeria. Do you know that Nigeria is blessed? But the problem we have with our country is that almost every Nigerian, not just the leaders now, we are too possessed with natural things than important things. Because I know if I say our government, everybody says I support. But some of you too, you are like our government. Yes, they are buying jeeps now. So, so, so ah, we have not paid our debt. They want to borrow money to buy jeeps for senators. Some of you do not even need the Christmas dress that you have bought. Some of you can't afford it. But just because you are too natural, you are always concerned with what people will say. So some of you have even gone to borrow because you want to impress. You are not different from our government now. let's learn from Christmas I will show you the lesson to learn but I'm only showing you what makes a wise man different from a foolish man a, a, an ordinary person only goes by what the things he sees in the physical but a wise man will look deeper and see better can we look at our lesson this morning I discovered this lesson it blessed my life and I want to share it with you hallelujah I didn't hear you. People say, in the way the world is now, hear me, so corrupt, it is not possible to do God's will and become great. Is that not the popular saying? Da, peluba ye sherin se, pelubi nkon sherin se, e yon le shefe, olor nuko din lao, e yon le shefe, olor nuko gao, pelubi nkon sherin se, but listen, People say greatness is not possible if you don't join the world. But one of my greatest lessons from Christmas is that Jesus our Lord has proved this to be wrong. Do you know why? All over the world today they are celebrating Christmas. Except for in Canada where they are not yet in, on Christmas Day. We are ahead of them. In the next few hours, they will be waking up to December 25. But can I tell you the truth? Jesus' greatness is a lesson for us to say, you don't have to compromise before you can be great. He didn't compromise. But today, all over the world, December 25 is a reality. You will see companies, they will put up promos. You will even see companies like, for instance, Qatar Airlines own it by an Islamic nation. They will tell you that, oh, there is Christmas promo going on. Buy, pay for three tickets and get one free. Or they will tell you 50% discount on every journey right now. All over the world, they are celebrating one man. The son of God. He didn't compromise to be great. And I will continue to tell you if anyone is telling you that you cannot be great until you join the standard of the world, Jesus is an example that that's a lie. Do you know that companies are selling now because it's Christmas season? 
You go to go to markets now. People are almost eating themselves. People are almost eating them, their heads on themselves in markets because of one man. Even the watching work caught here to work back, but we pay to but to what beshe oh lega talo so there for it, but not deck back ball. I've been no aye corner be Jesus in it. Aye no ni. I've been no aye corner to share and share ni. Aye no ni. Even the watching work it here. Oh, want to tori promotion, love fees. On ba wan yi we, on fen yi le le. We are pastor, eh, understand. But Jesus has come to prove to us that you can be great without compromising to the standard of the world. Say here. Yeah. When I was thinking about Christmas, you know, from all over the world. Australia have had calls from all over the world. We know we have members scattered abroad. People have called me from England, from Norway, from Australia, from different places. So I just want to wish you Merry Christmas. So I just want to wish you Merry Christmas. So I just want to wish you Merry Christmas. So I just want to greet you. And the thing just kept crossing my mind. One Jesus, born where? born in Bethlehem in a manger. One Jesus. In fact, I was listening to mommy Adichumo. Mommy Adichumo said, if you measure Israel, you can travel around Israel within two hours. You know, you can't travel around Nigeria in one week. But you can travel from one junction of Israel to another part of Israel in two hours. You are true with going around Israel. That was where he was born. Yet, all over the world, they are celebrating him. Everybody is preparing for tomorrow. Those in America will tell you there are Christmas trees all over America now. We are preparing. Oh, tomorrow is going to be Christmas. Tomorrow, Though they are doing fun fair, but all of them know that Jesus' birthday was fixed on that day. Let me tell your neighbor, don't compromise. I didn't hear you. Ah. I wrote here this has shown us that a person can become so great in righteousness a person can become so great don't tell me that if you don't pastor you don't understand if I don't join there who told you that Jesus did not join court Jesus did not compromise. But today, we can't, we can't go through a whole year. Jesus has about two peculiar months in the whole year all over the world. Easter, they talk about his death and his resurrection. Christmas, December, they talk about his birth. It's not a name that you mention and somebody say, who is that? Still, he didn't compromise. Let's move on. I want to do the truth. There are some things I'm going to show you. Listen, you can be made great without compromising the standard of God in order to conform to the pattern of the world. You can be made great. You can be great. I'm saying it again. You can be made great without compromise. Please, don't let the devil deceive you. I was telling one of a young lady in our church some years ago because she, because of age, she thought that age was not on her side. So you know what? She ran towards a young man and went to park into the young man's house and was saying, uh, calling the young man, my husband, my husband, my husband, my husband. She left church. She was a member of our church. She left church because of it. She was calling my husband. My. So one day I saw her, I said, sister, even if you tie yourself around the neck of this man, it doesn't make him your, your husband. She looked at me and I said, I said, have you forgotten that a guy gave birth to a male child for Abraham? They see through her load out. They allow God to give you what he wants to give you. 
She said, my pastor talks too much. The day they chased her out, she was even pregnant for the guy. The sisters of the guy came from the east and they said, we heard that our brother has married. My mother sent us that he didn't approve any marriage. So yeah, begin to pack your things. While she was struggling with them, she noticed that the, the baby in her womb stopped moving. From there, she, they were rushed, she rushed herself to the hospital because they sent her out. The baby was already dead. She gave birth to a stillbirth. And she still came back to become single sister. Who told you that it must be done on the platform of sin before you can have it? Let me tell your neighbor, say I will walk in righteousness. Listen. <laughs> I ask a question here. What were the principles Jesus wrote on to become great in a sinful world? I will only show you one or two. What were the principles Jesus wrote on to become great in a sinful world? What were those principles? Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 6. Please put it on screen. And when Ilano woni Jesu gun wonu ogo ti o fi je ko ko ye ni ilano Olorun. Number 1, look at this. He said, "Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. Wait for me. Number 1, hear me. He did not live his life according to the counsel of worldly people. You know why Jesus was successful in righteousness? He didn't live his life based on the counsel of worldly people. Now, if you ask so many Christians today, who are the pictures you are looking at? Some of our young boys are looking at the video. Some of our young girls are looking at Tiwa Savage. Abi. So you want to dress like Tiwa Savage? You want to dress like Davido? You know, he will always dress with a cup in his hand. Davido is always drinking something. But Jesus is, look at the pattern. He said, blessed is the man. Who is, who, whose counsel do you follow? Can I tell you the truth? The moment you are born again, an unbeliever can never be your mentor. The standard is is not the same. A non-believer can change marriage partner ten times. It does not in the world. They will say it does not count anything. If that one is not okay, just move to the next one. But in the kingdom, there is a pattern. If you say you are born again, there is a standard. That's why a wise man said you will eventually become who you consistently look at. Talungo. Jesus our Lord did not take the people of the world the standard of, his, of the world as his own pattern are you learning something this, mo this morning now which means he did not follow their pattern I wrote here people of the world has their own standard Jesus did not follow it look at what the Bible says in James chapter 4 verse 4 Let's re-echo it. James chapter 4 verse 4. Put it on screen. Let's see. Jesus was able to walk in righteousness because his picture, the vision he had in front of him was right. He was not looking at the wrong person. Can we read together? One, two, and let's go. Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that what? Friendship with the world is enmity with God. So who is your mentor? What pictures are you constantly looking at? Ah, you know one of the things that used to touch me, me, Pastor Prince with, is that you can't be in this kind of a church and still be living in sin, except you are doomed for destruction. I was listening to one tape yesterday when I was preparing for service. One of our married brother invited one of our single sister to his house. 
I was toasting her. Our sister recorded it. Our sister was now asking him, what about your wife? He said, forget about it. He said, don't you know that I'm a friend to your wife? He said, did you leave that? He said, I just want you to know that you are spending the night in our house. Where is your wife? He said, him and his wife are supposed to be in a prayer meeting. He said, as they were speaking, the wife called. We are waiting for you in church. He told the wife that something came up. Something came up. I was listening, I was listening to the recording. Something came up. I can't come to the church. You pray overnight. I will join you tomorrow. Ah. Are you eating How will you go through this world with the level as the world is and see now you end up in hell? Nigeria is hell already. You live in Nigeria and see now go back in hell. Ah. From one hell, from one hell to another one. Tofi mu no le wa lola no tofi tonpa da ol ol 76 times. Pra of neba u ga o. Has ha of neba u tonga o. Ah, she kuku wa pa gugu e po ka o pe wo the best thing ni pe. Seri orun apade tin ba fi le bo nu ele ko ye kin tun lo lo mi. I'm telling you truth. Now, those abroad will tell you that it's not difficult to go to school. There are student loans. And they will, they are, their school system is so much packaged in ways that you can be working, financing yourself, paying back your loan, and still going to school. You want no more in Nigeria to back by loan. Loan, you know that. Somebody borrowed 14 million, or the 44 million. <laughs> one interest. Oh, you have a phone company. Only my own company. Do not take the people of the listen. The, don't let them be your standard. Let's go back to that someone. Someone. That's someone. We are still reading someone. Look at it. He said, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel. The, the, there's counsel of the ungodly people all around. You know, if you steal somebody's money, the people of the world will tell you that you are what? You are smart. Abi? But boy, ain't just you know. Ah! Who just you, Vajay? 20 million, who be? Who just you, Oma Lomo? Who just you, Gon? Counsel of the ungodly. In the world, to back by Yawoni, what would they tell you? Who smart ni? Sir? Me, God? Come on, low. Oh, I come on, no. Come on, oh. You mean you take bus slang here? The counsel of the ungodly. Oh, Cassie, we can't follow their pattern. In the world, if you dress and expose your body, what would they say? You are sexy. Okay, I'm but but I'm wearing current now. I'm not current ni. Too current. We can't follow their, their, their counsel. Nor stand, stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So, what's number one? He did not live his life according to the counsel of worldly people. Then number two is in verse two. Show me verse two fast, fast, fast. I don't have all the time. Look at this. He says, but his delight. You know what they call delight? His joy is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. I wrote something down. He delights, he, sorry, he delighted in the word of God. Now, Jesus loved the word. Can I tell you this truth? You can't study the Bible if you don't love the Bible. Oh, my born is here. You can't be thinking of the Bible if you don't love the word of God. There are so many things to think about. But he got the foundation right. His delight. He knew a man do see or alone. 
And because he delights in the word, the Bible says he meditates on it. That's what he's always thinking about. He's always thinking about. He's always, and because he's thinking about it, his thoughts are guided. He has guided thoughts, guided in righteousness. You can't go that way. Let's prove it. In Luke chapter 2 from verse 41, look at Jesus as a boy of 12 years old. Luke chapter 2 from verse 41. Move, move so fast. Luke chapter 2 from verse 41. Luke 2 41. Not Exodus. Luke chapter 2 from verse 41. Yes. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. Verse 41, 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. And when they had finished the day, the days and they returned the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem and Joseph and his mother did not know it but supposing him to have been in the company they went how many days a day's journey I want to travel or job country law and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances so when they had not found him find him they returned making two days seeking him they traveled to one one day traveled back one day making two days let's move on now it was that after three days they found him making how many days five days they found him where in the temple what was he doing sitting in the mix of teachers what was he doing both listening to them and doing what asking them questions he delights in the world and it because the devil wants to tempt you with several tricks I will show you five, six things you will benefit when you have a lasting, a strong relationship with God if I summarize so Jesus was a man of the word he was always meditating over the word so when they bring they bring things that look like opportunity he will weigh it in his heart is this in line with God's word that was why he was able to walk in righteousness quickly because of time let's look at six things you will enjoy when you maintain a relationship with God there are six things you will enjoy when you maintain a solid relationship with God because today we see people going to churches but they don't know God. People celebrating Christmas but they are not born again. Number one, God will speak to men for you when you have a relationship with him. God will be the one advertising you. Matthew chapter 3 verse 17. This one that you are the one announcing yourself. No, 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 no. You don't need to announce yourself. When it was time for me to get married, I was praying, Lord, who do you want me to have as my wife? God revealed, Sister Yemisi to me, those years. I didn't know that as I was praying, God was, God had also revealed Brother Prince Will to Sister Yemisi. This one that you are the one going to tell them, Momo, Gumo, Shoni. God will be the one speaking to men for you. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Show us now, verse 17. What happened? Let's read together. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am what? Well pleased. There are places I've not gone to before that people people just go sack. God reveals so and so thing to us. God said we should do this for you. Ah, there's nothing as sweet as God speaking to men for your sake. When I went to meet my 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 mother-in-law, that time mother-in-law to be, because I told my fiance as I told her my intention, we prayed, she prayed, we agreed. I told her I cannot do boyfriend by the window. 
I went to the family to tell the other brother. The brother said, I'll come and see their mom. I got to the mom. The mom said, Pastor, Pastor, Ulu Atifi Homi, Ke, Inrashi Olono, Mi Ye Misi Mafe. And she told me the story. Ha! Baola, she convinced the daddy. In Misi Ne, Fruit wine, Nemo Bello. Be Moshe Be from daddy. Daddy be wale one jade, one ye by yo. Want to beg be when Jadi wa man mowa, but it be said on your eye. Me won't be one pass or kill a gua, money ever wine me, original. Ah, she na plumara. Ah, mbashi ha. Ni shoy, ni gi shoy la lo. Musa, alo yo gusi, mbashi ha, mama ni ma wari. Pastor, oh, they laugh right. Look at God. She quickly, she wanted to bring money, 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 She quickly went outside, got the shina, and put it on the table. I went to call her husband. The daddy saw the wine and said, eh, kino bawa. Bibo, she said, mommy, come back to me, so long. Ah, one fair travel to America. She ha. Me only sorrow. America be tibo because I remember one message of Pastor W. F. Kumui that I listened to as a young Christian. Let me quote. I always quote it when I when I hear that message. That so many Christians of today are righteous but foolish. He said, "How do you know that they are righteous but foolish?" He said, "Let's go back to the story of those two spies." that came to the house of the harlot. The Bible says, the harlot put them in the roof when those men came. The men came and they were shouting, where are the two men that entered your house? The two men that entered the house, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? They said, the harlot said, they've gone towards the mountain. Pastor Kumi now said, if they were members of Deeper Life Church, they would say, no, we are not on the mountain. We are righteous. They are lying against us. We are here on the roof. He said, and they will have brought them down from the roof and killed them. Then somebody will say, God is not faithful. You need to be righteous and wise. So when Mama said, one law America, 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 or do you like when you are still America this <laughs> you? When you have a solid relationship with God, God will be the one speaking to people on your behalf. The Bible school where I went, as I got there, the man is of blessed memory now. As I got there, the Lord told me, he said, go for a one-year course. As I entered, the man said, are you the pastor coming for a one-year course? God told me that I should do a four-year course for you within one year. Ah! I was shocked. Stop speaking for yourself. See, your voice cannot be as loud as the voice of God. During COVID, one of our sons called me from Australia. He said God spoke to him that he should take care of me during the COVID. Pastor, send your account number. Number two. When you maintain a solid relationship with God, listen, God will show you deep things that will make men see you as an extraordinary person. Olorun ma ma fi won asinri ohun ijinle han e ti idore po iwa ati olorun ba dramaran how many of you tell the secrets of your life to an outdoor friend you don't now it is a close friend you tell secrets to abi there are deep things so i come again there are deep things so That God will begin to show you when you are close to him. 
there's no time. Let me rush to have about five minutes more. Number three. Number three. When your relationship with God is solid, number three, he will program it for all things to work together for your good. According to Romans 8, 28. Put that one on screen. A person that maintains a solid relationship with, with God. The Bible says, for we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So even the things that was planned against you, because you have a solid relationship with God, it will turn for good. See, that song that we used to sing, I can see everything turning around, everything turning around, everything turning around. For my, it's not for those that doesn't have a relationship with God. Nothing will turn. But for those that have solid relationship with God, see, everything will be turning for their good. Number four. Are you set? If you have a solid relationship with God, hear me. The enemy will not be able to hurt you. According to Proverbs 16, 7. The Bible says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. I want to hear you. Number five. Number five. They themselves, they don't like you, but they will not be able to hurt you. They won't know why. That's why I see I have chosen that in the year 2024, I will increase in my relationship with God. As you are writing down your program for 2024, and 2024, I want to build house, 2024, I want to travel out, 2024. See, your number one priority on number one list should be in 2024. I want to improve in my relationship with God. You will see that the more closer you are to God, the more it will be difficult for men to hurt you. One well, like hell, but they can't, they can't hurt you. I won't go on. More listen, they hurt you. Let's take number five. Because of time. Ah, I love this number five. When you maintain a solid relationship with God, he will display his power both in your life and through your hands according to Acts 10.38. He will display his power in your life. He will display his power through your hands. Share the last one to move soil. It was not part of it before. But it was when Minister Benga was preaching this morning. You didn't know that you spoke to me. Listen. When you have a solid relationship with God, you won't waste your time fighting the battle that is not yours. You know when those three nations came against Jehoshaphat? If Jehoshaphat didn't have a relationship with God, that made God to tell him that Jehoshaphat, you see, in that battle you don't need to fight. He will have been gathering soldiers. Abi? The, the battle was supposed to be for God. They don't know what God is saying to them. So every single thing that faces them steers a panic in their heart. God said to Joseph, that battle is not yours. Ah, sir, I am the one that they are coming against. Abi? I hear the messenger say, saying, Joseph shall die. Joseph shall die. Israel shall fall. Israel shall fall. And you are saying it's not mine. God said, I said that battle is not yours. And thank God for Joe. He understood. We are gathered and we are calling. I will not let me go. 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 I will not let me December 14, But change the shape 
But because you, you, you can't hear God. I love Joseph. Who she is, who one looking she? Who can walk on him? Eja jama on him. Eja ma i. Eja ma jo. Who to solve him? Who want to do this? Why? Who can walk on? And they were busy dancing and dancing and dancing, and those people were busy killing themselves. By the time they finished praising God, the Bible says they got that there. I love how the Bible puts it. You read it this morning that they have helped themselves to destroy themselves. Can you imagine where you are supposed to be fighting? You are harvesting. Develop a strong relationship with God. You know when to rest. When we're about to give birth to our first child, we got to the hospital. My wife labored for like two days. Ah, Lord, all the women have prayed for, prayed for, they have been delivering. Lord, what are you saying? He said, son, I want her to go through CS. And the reason is because she will counsel a lot of ladies in ministerial experience that will go through it. She will become a source of strength and joy to, to them. I said, then, Lord, what are you saying? He said, they will operate her tomorrow. Go to the doctor. Straight. I went to the doctor. The doctor said, let's continue to check on it tomorrow. According to the word of the Lord, the second day they did it. He has already assured me that I'm I'll, I'll victory. This is my wife. So, your relationship with God is more important than your relationship for money. It's more important than your relationship with anybody. That's why Jesus became great. Are you blessed this morning? Are you sure you have learned something? Let's be on our feet. Let's begin to celebrate the birthday man, our Savior. Begin to say sweet words to him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. <laughs> Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. Let me hear you sing it to him. Jesus, your love is great. I can hear your voice. Jesus, Jesus your love is great. Yes. Jesus, your, your love is great. Uh -huh. Your love is great. In my own life, I want to hear your voice. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. Let me hear you sing it. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. I bless your name. Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. I say, Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. Let me hear your voice. Jesus, your love is great. We celebrate you. Jesus, your love is great. Oh, yes, oh God. Jesus, your love is great. Uh -huh. Your love is great in my own life. Two more times. I say, Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. 
Your love is great in my life. Let me hear your voice sing to him. Jesus, your love is great. Yes, oh Jesus. Jesus, your love is great. Oh, yes, oh God. Jesus, your love is great. Uh -huh. Your love is great in my own life. I say, Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. For the last time, let me hear your voice. Jesus, your Go love ahead. is great. Jesus, your love is great. Jesus, your love is great. Your love is great in my own life. That's why you should go home with this lesson. Christmas is not just about drinks, rice, and chicken. Christmas should teach us that you can be great without compromising the standard. Christmas should teach us that you can walk in righteousness and become a world wild, wide hero. Spend time with God. Develop yourself in relationship with Him. You will enjoy it. Can I tell you this truth? Your relationship with God pays you more than it pays God. I want to pray for you. That's why if you are not yet born again, seize this opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Walk with him. You will come back to say, Pastor, thank you for telling us this truth. All eyes closed. If you are not yet born again, I'll give you the privilege. And two, but if I hear from Christy, me and Nicole know what's okay. You say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Today I decide that I will do the will of God. Clean my name from the book of death. Write it in the book of life. Holy Spirit come into my heart afresh. Help me that in my relationship with you I will grow. Thank you Father. In Jesus name I pray. Father I pray for the church. We have few days to end this year. To be precise, seven days. Within this one week, if there's anyone that is marked for any evil thing among us, I speak their deliverance. Now, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whatever I lose on earth, you shall lose in heaven. I set them free from every evil mark in the name of Jesus. I put them under your covering, oh God. Covering for favor. Covering for opportunities covering for perfect divine protection as we continue now work with you oh god lead us into your glorious plans for our lives the week is blessed for our sake wherever our family members are far and near no bad reports from them in jesus name you are blessed your family is blessed all that concerns you blessed in jesus precious name we have prayed and amen before we share the grace do we have anybody worshiping